In the French city of Bijan Soon, in April of 1894, a French man by the name of Joseph Fashir was being released from the St. Robert's Insane Asylum after the attempted murder of his girlfriend. A newspaper would later report that it was like opening the door to a cage of a wild beast. He is known as the killer of the little shepherds. In four years, he would have 11 known victims, although it is believed the count was as high as 27. This serial killer mutilated his victims much the same way as Jack the Ripper. But his crimes and victims have become mostly forgotten about throughout history. My name is Holly. Join me in the murder she shed for this rarely told vintage true crime tale right from my she shed. If you enjoy my story today, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can join my other she shed subscribers each week for a strange story from the murder she shed. Now, let's travel back to France in the late 1800s. This was a period of advancements in art and science. This period was known as the Realist Movement. This movement allowed the daily lives of the ordinary French people to be painted and seen throughout France and eventually throughout the world. During this era, forensic technology was born through a criminologist more skilled than the fictional Sherlock Holmes. Alexandra Lacassagne was head of forensic medicine. And he was able to solve crimes that seem unsolvable at the time. And to this day, his methods are taught in police academy worldwide. He is one of the first to recognize that everything doesn't end with death, but that instead the existence of the body enters a new phase. He was the first to use insects to determine how long the process of decay had been underway. He was the first to use blood splatter patterns and the first to use the bones in the body to determine the height and also the roundabout age of the dead. Also the first to see that different ammunitions left different markings. He was a genius in his own era and his intelligence would be used to catch the serial killer, Joseph Fashir. Joseph was born to a poor farmer and was the 15th of 16 children. As a baby, he was a twin of a little sister. But due to an unfortunate accident, she was killed by an older sibling. Joseph's mother had covered the twins completely up with a sheet to keep from bugs biting them. She had just pulled some hot bread out of the oven, and in order for it to cool down, she asked one of her children to go set it somewhere, but not in the floor. The child ended up setting it on top of Joseph's twin sister. When Joseph was a young boy, he desired to be a priest and would often preach to other children at his school. Joseph couldn't decide as he got older if he had a greater desire to be a priest or to satisfy his sexual gratification. When he was 14, he attempted to choke one of his brothers to death over a wheelbarrow incident. Luckily, a neighbor intervened. Also at 14, he took his cat to a field and attempted to break all of its legs. At age of 15, he left the village and became a monk. But two years later, he was asked to leave because he became a little too handsy with a few of the monks. At 18, he returned to his place of birth, Beaufort, and started taking farm jobs. And he attempted to R.A.P.E. a 12-year-old boy, and then he fled to one of his sister's homes. While there, he developed a venereal disease and was kicked out by her husband six months later. As part of his therapy for the venereal disease, doctors actually removed part of one of his, mm -hmm, that's all I can say, 
on YouTube. For the next couple of years, he drifted from town to town, seeking farm jobs until eventually joining the French army. When Joseph was 23 and while on leave, he met a 19-year-old girl named Louise Barant and bought her dinner and by the evening had proposed to her. She soon learned it was a big mistake when he threatened to kill her if she ever betrayed him. She knew that she would never be safe in the same town as Joseph, so she fled to her mother's house. But he was able to get a four-month medical leave and showed up at her mother's house. And when he was repeatedly turned down, Joseph then showed up at Louise's employer's house, where she was a housemaid. And when she answered the front door and he couldn't convince her to marry him again, he then shot her four times, two shots in the mouth and two more grazed the top of her head. He turned the weapon on himself and fired two shots in his face. Both survived because the dealer who had sold Joseph the weapon loaded the cartridges only with half charges, just enough powder to stop an aggressor, but not necessarily to kill him. This is how he had ended up in the insane asylum with his face disfigured and a bullet that would stay in his face till the day he died. Just two months after being released from the asylum, he would commit his first murder. 21-year-old Eugenie just got out of work at the factory. When she encountered Joseph, he strangled her, stabbed her repeatedly, and cut off part of one of her breasts and then S.O.D. mised her. Only a few months later, a 13-year-old girl named Louise was looking for her lost puppy. Two days later, her body was found in a barn, and she had been assaulted in the same way as his first victim. Then in May of 1895, Joseph would kill again. A 17-year-old timid girl was asked to walk to her sister's house to care for her since she was sick. It looked like it might rain, so she just grabbed her umbrella and took her dog so she could feel safer during the walk. But she would never make it to her sister's house. A friar was walking down a road when he heard a dog bark. He followed the sound and came upon a young lady that looked as if she was sleeping with an umbrella placed over her head. As he got closer, he realized her skirts were raised and her blouse was ripped open, and she was covered in blood that looked as if the wound was on her neck and chest. The friar ran to the nearest village to get help. Later, the friar was accused of killing the girl, and his family had to go on the run. The day after the killing, Joseph stopped at a widow's house and asked her if he could heat up his food on her stove. She noticed his hand and asked him what happened. He stated a dog had bitten him. That little dog had tried to protect his owner from the evil that fell on her. The widow washed his hand and wrapped it for him. He did his food and even offered him bread and wine. And then he brutally R.A.P.E.'d her, murdered her, and went on his way. After she was so kind to him, he later would say he would regret this death. A few days later, Joseph noticed a 15-year-old shepherd boy named Victor sitting in a field watching his herd. He gutted the young boy and then cut off his, let's say, male equipment and also S.A.'d him. He said of all of Joseph's victims, this young boy suffered the most. Not too long after that, he mutilated and assaulted a 16-year-old girl. Six days later, a 14-year-old shepherd boy named Pierre was murdered and his mangled body would be found after his sheep were found wandering onto a neighboring property. Joseph ended up in jail for a while due to a fight he had gotten into with a man in the village he happened to be traveling through at the time. Even though he had been seen by others that had survived the attacks at his hands and everyone was beginning to discuss the man with the white rabbit fur hat and the disfigured face. While he was in jail, they never tied him to the murders. Emil Forquet was the local magistrate at the time and would be the one along with the forensic criminologist Alexandra Lacassagna to eventually bring Joseph to justice. He happened to see a news article about the murder of the shepherd 
boy Pierre. And Victor, the other shepherd boy that was brutally murdered, had been a case he had already known about. He was able to tie the two boys together due to the similar ways their bodies had been mutilated. And he was then able to figure out the killer was a vagabond and never stayed in one place very long. Next, he began finding other bodies that had been killed in similar ways and questioning witnesses that had been attacked. He was able to get a description of the killer. He then sent out a memo to other colleagues across France to look out for a man with a scarred face, black beard, and black hair with a twisted lip that contorts into a grimace when he speaks entitled it Jack the Ripper of the Southeast. By this time, Joseph was already out of jail and had already began his killing spree again. For some odd reason, Joseph decided to buy a puppy off of a cobbler and also buy a bird tethered to a string. A month after buying these animals, he's made his way to a farmer's house where he begged for some stew. He ate some and offered the rest to his puppy. His puppy rejected the food, and the farmer witnessed him say to the puppy, If you don't eat any, I will kill you. And then he took his club that he had been carrying and bashed the little puppy's head in and then turned to his bird and did the same. The farmer was horrified by this act, but gave Joseph a shovel in order to bury them. His last attack, he would be sent to jail due to a scrawny little man that was determined to protect his family. Sir Ralph and his wife Marie and their three children were walking in the woods just trying to collect pine cones for fuel. Sir Ralph and his seven-year-old son had walked a different direction from his wife and the youngest children. She was bent over picking up pine cones when she heard a rustling sound. And before she could even look, felt someone grab her by the throat and throw her on the ground, where he continued to choke her. She began to kick and yank her attacker's mustache. He jumped up to grab something from his bag. At that moment, she was able to catch her breath and yell at the top of her lungs. Her husband came running. He may have been little, but he was mighty, and he began fighting like a lion, even though Joseph was stabbing him with scissors. He continued to fight while Marie was hitting Joseph with the stick. Joseph had messed with the wrong family because even the children were throwing rocks at him. Neighbors heard the commotion and they were able to haul Joseph off to jail. He received three months for this attack and the magistrate in this town remembered the letter he had received from Fourquet and sent him the description of the suspect. 4K wanted to immediately interview him after hearing the description. They transported Joseph to his interview, during which he unsuccessfully attempted to escape. After 4K interviewed Joseph for three weeks and was unable to get any useful information from him, he decided to try something new and told him, well, You're not the man that we have been looking for, and we will release you after some final interviews. Then he told Joseph that he had been writing a book and had been interviewing vagabonds who came on his way, and he would be interested in telling his story. Joseph then told him the different places he had traveled and in the order he had traveled them and pointing out on a map the exact path. Joseph, not ever thinking about how he was leading him to each victim along those paths. Then 4K brought witnesses in to identify Joseph. Then he shot Joseph by telling him he knew all the murders he was guilty of because he had connected them. Joseph never imagined all of his crimes would be connected, and he left 4K's office pale as a ghost that day. As 4K sat down for his dinner that evening, Guards brought him a signed confession letter from Joseph. Joseph blamed the killings on a dog bite as a child. He stated after the bite, his parents gave him some kind of strange tonic that had made him start craving blood. 
Joseph later told Fourquet the only way he would discuss the murders with him was if the local newspaper would put in print for all to see. The murders were then printed in the newspaper. The case exploded in the national press under headlines such as the Shepherd Killer and Ripper of the Southeast. At this point, La Casagna was called in to do the autopsies in order to connect the murders. He was able to conclude every victim was killed in the same way. First strangled, then the throat was cut. He left the body in the spot until most of the blood drained out. Then he would drag the corpse to a different spot where he would mutilate and R-A-P-E the victim before then attempting to hide the body and kick dirt over the blood spot. Forkay and La Consagna knew they had to get their evidence and facts done before the trial in order for Joseph not to get away with the insanity defense and then being released again. They knew that he killed Levin, one adult and 10 children, but believed that he had taken many more lives, although they couldn't prove but 11 of the possibly as much as 27 murders. Joseph Fashir was sentenced to death by the guillotine. Joseph became a coward and refused to walk to the guillotine, and he told them he would have to be carried. He was told if they had to carry him, he would not be able to address the crowd. Joseph's last words was so be it and vainly said, too bad for society. Joseph was then cut up for doctors in much the same way as he cut up his victims. And that, my friends, is called turnabout is fair play. Well, glad you could join me today for Suspense She Said Sunday about the killer of shepherds. Hope you have a great week. Be blessed and make it a goal to bless others this week. Love y'all. Bye. The cage. Door to the cage. Opening the door to a cage of Joseph. Joseph. It's baby boy. It's baby boy. This is Simon. If you don't know him, if you've never been on my channel before, this is my baby boy. And he's a beautiful baby. He always just stares at mama all the time. Repeatedly, repeatedly stabbed her. Yes. Said that all wrong. Has to walk to her sister's ha house. <laughs> the day at the <sighs> pine cones for fuel. 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 You're breathing so heavy. Can you relax it a little, huh? Murder, 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 she shit. Murder, 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 she shit. I know you guys wish I wouldn't sing. I wish I wouldn't sing. Wish I wouldn't tell rhymes too, but that happens too. If you come back and you're one of my subscribers, I thank you so much because I know I'm definitely not the best YouTube channel out there. There is more elegant, sophisticated, not so accented hawkers out there that you could listen to and here you are listening to little old me and i appreciate it this little country girl i'm not little anymore i'm 50 years old oh that sucks anyway thanks for watching thanks for being patient with me as i started my new channel i'm slowly improving slowly getting there one of these days maybe i'll be as sophisticated but i doubt it that's just not in my personality i'm just not a sophisticated type gal just your everyday ordinary goofy just that gal that always makes mistakes <laughs> and always screws up but i do love my dogs dearly and that's all that matters in life right and also i promised one of my viewers i would show my driftwood fence that i had made which it's not real impressive i've made better things out of driftwood but it keeps my ducks out and that's all that matters but i'll show you my other things so you won't think i just suck at building